All right, so we're back at the press, and uh, I finally got the parts in that I need to uh, continue the build. All right, so it needs to be down like this. So it needs to be down like this uh, if the shaft is up. It needs to go on like this. So we're now on to this part here. Uh, this is the uh, HR2 snap ring you'll need for this location. And you'll also need uh, the special pair of snap ring pliers to apply this. All right, so what we're gonna do is slide it right there. And then we're gonna need to use the tool here to space it a bit to get it over this gear here and then place it to switch hands like we are home free here yep okay so we're good so there's that now, the last part is putting on this bit, the uh, uh, 7025B. So let's go do that and continue on. Stay focused. We have it, a completed 3.82 gear ratio input shaft ready to be reassembled into a transmission. This has been a day of days. All right, so we're gonna begin assembly of, or re the reassembly of the transmission uh, right now. And if everything fits together, we'll be good to go. All right, so the first thing I already have in here is uh, this clip. Uh, and this is one of the two uh, retaining clips needed for the uh, reverse idler gear. So this is just gonna set in, in this little slot right there, just like that. And then, We'll take the reverse idly gear and we'll put it in, down into place. Now, the next thing we'll do is get our input and output shaft. We'll drop them in past that reverse idler gear. So you're gonna have to do a little bit of wiggling around to get the input shaft and output shaft to fit in place. That means getting your hand down in there. Well, that was pretty easy. All right, so now we are in line like so. You need to put the bearing back in, otherwise you'll have a very bad day. So slide the bearing on, and in the slot, you gotta jostle the uh, reverse idler gear a little bit to get it down in there. This secondary um, retaining washer, and it needs to go face up and towards the corner of the exterior part of the tray, I'm trying to get you where you can see. Let's put it like this. See this piece right here? This washer needs to face downward. So see I have the washer. It needs to be facing uh, right where the retaining bracket is going to go for the reverse idler. And on that, it needs to fit in this slot right here. So when you go to put it on like this, that retaining slot needs to be in here. Does that make sense? All right, so let's drop this in. I'm gonna need to pull back on the input shaft to get it in place. Put that on and into place. hear that that's how you know that the locking piece is in there 
like so. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is start putting on our uh, shift forks. And you wanna start with number five to begin with. I like to go through the shift tower and on to select a fork. All right, so I got the first one. And that's how you know you got it in. You can slide it around relatively easy. All right, so this is what number uh, three and four. And three and four go on the input shaft. And this one's a little tricky because you gotta go through the top and slide it in onto the input shaft. My Atlanta. All right, so there is uh, numbers, numbers two, three and four, excuse me. All right, and here goes number one, and number one's gonna go back on the output shaft. One, one thing to note is how you can tell number one from number five, because they look the same, is number one has the bearing in it, and number five, doesn't have a bearing inside of it. So, and three, obviously three and four looks different than everything else. One has a bearing and it's facing downward like this. And five is flipped the opposite way and it doesn't have a bearing. So flip that in just like that. And if all of these are in neutral, they will line up correctly. Boom, there we go. I just had them all in the wrong spots. The two shift rails that we have, the longer shift rail will go down the one, one, two, and five. And it should snap in. I'm not snapping, you hear it. You hear a nice little clunk. I didn't hear a clunk, so I'm gonna take it out. Just like that. And then the uh, three, four is a short one. Yeah, nice little clunk there. All right, so those are in place. The next thing we're gonna just test to see how the shifter, the selector, shift selector fits in. And it should fit in ever so nicely. If everything's right, and in a neutral, the shift selector will go directly in, just like so. So everything's in neutral. And if I want to shift, right? There we go. So we know that's working. I'm gonna take this back out for now. The next thing you do is drop in your differential. And in my case, I have a limited slip differential. And this just plops down uh, right in place here. Let me not get my hands on the bearing. Plops down just like that. And we're good to go there. All right, so I'm gonna get the case half to see if essentially at this point, you've already, uh, how do you say, rebuilt the transmission and put it back together as far as the mechanical com mechanical components of the build uh, I'm going to tip now don't forget that you need bo uh, bolts right here for the uh, the reverse idler bracket you got to put two bolts in right there and you're good to go and the thing that I want to find out is if I have correctly positioned everything because the two case halves have to fit together and if they don't that means that I've done something wrong I need to go find out what it is all right so transmission is flat on the surface it is good to go I need to pull the uh, oh wait I gotta put it in focus here 
There we go. I need to pull the uh, bell housing case back off. Um, do the uh, the shimming and shaft stuff for the input shaft. I got to do that just like I did for the um, my gosh LSD here differential. And you gotta remember to put some uh, uh, gasket maker on the shift selector because uh, it will leak if you don't if you do not do that.